G'day everyone. Hey, you know those vlogs where we open boxes? This is another one of those. So my first ever 3D printer was a Flashforge and I still have it and it still runs, but it was, I think I got this like seven years ago. They have very kindly sent me one of their newest models and they're way more affordable. And from what I hear, really, really, really good quality and really fast. So we're gonna do a test print on this and check it out. Um, and see if this is something that those of you who are interested in getting into 3D printers uh, would like to check out. Also, side note, so the first 3D printer I ever got was a Flash Forge. It was a workhorse. I did the 3D printing chain mail video using that. So I printed ABS, which is a higher temperature filament for like a month straight, nonstop. We have in the studio been using some other filament 3D printers. They have all died on us, which is unfortunate. I think to a degree, like they were sponsor provided and often they're prototypes or early manufactured versions. So they're a little more prone to breakage with longer use. Uh, whereas what I've been sent now is another workhorse. So we're gonna set that up and check it out. Uh, well, Murray's gonna set it up and we're gonna check it out. So let's jump to the future. Thanks, Murray. Okay, I have just been informed that Murray has set up the printer and it is, in his words, hungry to print. Whoa, look at that go. I love the housing. Ooh, so we'll let this print. Then I'm gonna chuck something of our own on. Yay, I love new toys. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> that's that was your face when I was like, that's taken two hours. That's the test print. That's crazy. That's nuts. Tom, you keep reacting off camera. What's going on, man? The bottom of this is so smooth. <laughs> you got your first 3D printer like last Probably year? Probably about uh, eight months ago, something yeah. like that. I think I've got it set up pretty well and it yeah. does some nice prints, but that's another level. Like it's it's literally glassy smooth. Two hours. Two that's the hours. craziest thing. It's that's like, a 14-hour print for me. I would not expect. Let's get let's get close Jeez. here. That level of detail in two hours. Absolutely mind-blowingly insane. Let's print some cool stuff. We have a print. I need a spatula. Oh! oh! Okay, so this is the first thing I've printed that wasn't the test print. They just come off. It's a flex plate. Check this out. Talk about it comes off. You literally just flex the plate and they pop off. Now that's a flex. We'll add a live studio audience in post. I thought you might like this one. It's mm -hmm. it's like a jobs board. Oh, that's so cute. So I don't know if we're gonna come across any jobs in the game. We don't got any call to quest without side quests. Go on, do a read. <laughs> We've just started a awesome campaign over on Tabletop Time. Roleplay Jazza is starring in it as Cody. We're really excited about it. We're trying some really new things, including our new game system, Gateway, which is a prototype right now. And the really cool hook with this is we're going for a fun setting. It's set in 1988 in America. We're all playing last year of middle school kids about to go into their freshman year of high school who are themselves role playing in a fantasy world. So we're all playing two characters. It's crazy. It's a lot of fun. And the first episode's up now on Tabletop Time Roleplay. We'd love it if you check it out. I am very old. I don't think I have long left. I'd like to know <laughs> what I have in store for me. A fortune teller. <laughs> Yes! I think she has a crush on you. Who? The fortune teller. Yeah. The what? <laughs> Never get involved with such nonsense. Give us a second of Cody voice. Machine is busy. Prepare the, the 3D print and we <laughs> shall endeavor for the adventure to begin in earnest very shortly. Oh, you know, it's doing it. There you go. It, it takes a second. Like I just threw that on there. It sliced them. It diced them. It supported them. And it's going, yeah. So you know what this means? Cause we've got a full week until the next episode of Call to Quest. If I can knock out a full print bed every day, which seems like a very reasonable expectation, we're actually gonna be able to just slam whole bunch of props together. I yeah. feel like this thing is never gonna stop because we're just gonna be like, we can just have so much stuff all the time. That thing is shockingly fast. It's shockingly fast. <laughs> all right, a little bit of a check-in. I've printed, oh, and they're printed. My trees. Just like that. Now I've got an empty print bed. I can chuck on another one. This time I'm trying to fill the bed as much as possible. We'll see how long it takes. And it's actually bleeding over into that gray area a couple of places. I'm hoping that's just like a safety bleed, but it can technically print there. I don't know, but I'm gonna push it. Let's see what it does. Whoa, that one worked. That was a uh, full print bed and it just slapped that out. Very nice. Let's do the next one. And another one is done. We got the pile building. 
as I create my tower. All right, okay, I think you get the idea. The printer prints cool stuff a lot. I wanna show you a bunch of stuff I've printed because I've actually had it going for the last couple of weeks. Before I do that, I just wanna give a quick plug because Flash Forge have sent this to us for free. They reached out and offered to send the Adventure of 4 Pro, which is the one that I've been using here today. This is another level. <laughs> for multiple reasons. It comes with a webcam built in and you can use the Flash Cloud, their service, to look at your prints. Let's say if you have one printing at home or in the garage, you can see the status of it or just make sure that it, the print's not doing anything you don't want it to do, which it rarely does. Oh, look at that firmware update. Yeah, let's just update. They, it just keeps itself running. Now, aside from the day we set this up uh, about a month ago, I haven't touched any updates. It's just looking after itself. And that's the best thing about Flash Forge printers because we have used other printers in the studio and what you sort of save on price, you end up spending later down the line for spare parts or some of the bits and pieces that aren't as durably built. Plus you don't get all the whiz bang features and it sinks to you. I mean, come on. <laughs> there you go, upgrade completed. Just like that. You can send all your files to it wirelessly. You can, of course, plug in just your USB. One thing I really love about this is when you've transferred a file to it or plug something in, it holds it in its internal memory. So you can actually fish back to a file you printed weeks and weeks ago to be like, oh, where's that thing? And I lost the file and it, it's on there and it's ready to go. There's three pages. Uh, of the entire library up to the test print uh, and then everything I've built after that, which I'll be able to show you what they actually turned out like. But we really haven't had any failed prints that weren't our fault. So obviously supporting it is a thing. If you try and print a file with nothing under it supporting it, it will whiz out and not do great. But fortunately, Flash Forge also have their own software, which comes totally free to use. And it has loads of awesome features, auto supports, rafts, all the stuff that makes your prints run reliably. All of our prints were done on default settings. So I'm gonna leave a couple of links in the description. If you wanna get the Flash Forge Adventure Pro, you can get that with $20 off, which is basically getting yourself some free filament, which hey, who, who doesn't want more of that? Or if you wanna check out their whole range of printers and filament, you can save $10 if you spend over $50. So that'll be a separate link, but go check that out. I highly vouch for Flash Forge. Like we've been running this for weeks. We finally have a filament printer that can keep up with our production needs. And I'm very, very excited about that. So let me show you some of the stuff I've printed. So let me start off by showing you some of the stuff we've uh, actually assembled and painted ready for role play. So we wanted to print a bunch of things that we can use for our, you know, fantasy adventure role play that is also going to be useful for future fantasy adventures. So I downloaded a bunch of different SCL packs. We've got spooky trees. These were all just sort of one print and go things. And it's worth mentioning that these are not fancy paints jobs. They're basically like one coat of an aerosol misted with a few other colors of aerosol on top. So a brush never touched a model. So don't worry about the paint job, but actually still looks like really cool just because of all the natural detail on the character that the printer picks up. And again, all default settings are, and all of these were printed in like like a group of like three or four things in a day. Then we have this multi-part tower because we needed a watchtower for a certain part of our campaign. It's like a dungeon and a staircase thing and it's separate. And if you have a good enough printer that can print at the right settings, these little brick indentations will just, yeah, there you go, click into place. So no glue and we have the staircase attached by those brick ridges at the bottom. And now I can layer up and build our watchtower. If you wanna get into 3D printing, it, it's no longer early days. It's no longer like early adopter stuff. It's tried and tested and proven and the technology is great. The printers are getting really good and there's so many third parties and independent creators out there just making really cool things that really take minimal effort to put on a print overnight, get two aerosols and turn it into something you can use the next day. Like all of this cost as much as the filament. Obviously the printer is a cost. <laughs> You know, but once that's there, you've got many years of unlimited adventures awaiting you. So that is what has been printed and very roughly painted for our current use. And then we have some unpainted stuff with another tree because it came with a few variants. This one's more of like a town guard watchtower design. And the cool thing is because it's all modular, we could also just sort of make it a building. Speaking of building in a town, uh, as you can see, this has got a raft printed, which I mean, just peels off. And the way the raft works is it just gives the uh, smaller items something to hold on to. So in this case, the doors, which actually have holes for the hinges, were printed on the raft. They just snap off. Oh, it's so satisfying. Then this is just a little bit of rubbish, which you can actually recycle. But that's just a really cool way to just 
get more on your print and make the prints more reliable. Now we have the capacity to slowly but surely build up the assets we want for full on medieval towns. And we could just set and forget, let him run overnight. And then for another project, so that's everything just for this sort of medieval adventure stuff. Uh, there's a little tombstone because there's a video on the main channel that I've just finished filming because I'm about to go on my holiday uh, where I filled a cemetery with little gravestones and uh, filled it quite thoroughly, very quickly. The cool thing is we just made a little print bed of like 10 different headstones and I'd print it and I'd be like, oh, I want more. It's all on there. Just press print again. And I did that three times and I had more than enough gravestones. There you go. That is my little preview. And uh, I'm very excited to say now that we have a very reliable 3D filament printer in the studio, we're going to be taking it as far as we can. I know I am. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to make use of the discount uh, in the description. It actually gives us a bump so that if you get a Flash Forge printer through our link, it supports our studio as well. So we can make more awesome stuff. I've been blabbering. This vlog has been a long process of recording actually, but it's really nice to finally wrap up and share that with you because this has been really fun. All right, thanks for watching guys.